Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a hands-on look at the BDF M107 tablet. This is a budget Android tablet that sells for under 100 bucks and has a 10.1 inch display. Technically, it's classified as a phablet because it supports a SIM card. You can use it to make phone calls and also connect it to cellular networks when you are in locations without access to Wi-Fi. It runs on Android 9.0 and has pretty modern sized bezels for a 2020 budget tablet. Also comes in a few different color options. Here's what that blue color looks like and the construction is also made out of aluminum. Specs are relatively entry level as expected, but it does have a octa-core processor by Spectrum. In addition, it has a, a 5000 milliamp hour capacity battery, in addition to a rear camera at, rated at 5 megapixels. Now the RAM is only 2 gigabytes, which is a little on the low side these days, but for simple things like watching back a YouTube video, as long as you're not doing too much multitasking, it should still be okay. Now here are all the cellular bands it supports for 4G uh, connected internet speeds and for calling it is a micro SIM card slot. does also have a micro SD card slot to expand on the built-in memory which is good to see. Now here's what the box looks like. It is a little bit on the generic side and in fact the packaging it came just pretty much like this in the mail. There wasn't a protective bubble wrap on this particular item so hopefully I think the packaging could maybe be slightly improved with a bit more care as a, a quick note in the future. So anyways Opening it here for the first time, we have the tablet right on top, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. Underneath here, we do have quite a few accessories, uh, which are bundled in and they're separately wrapped, including a wall charger, USB based. And we also have a SIM card ejector tool in addition to an OTG cable. So you can transform the charging port into a full-sized USB type A port for plugging in other accessories like mouse, thumb drives, and hard drives. And there is a standard charging and syncing cable. Now both of these cables are using micro USB it seems like. We also have a quick user manual down below here in addition to a second screen protector that they give you. As for the tablet itself, taking it out of the sleeve, and aha! On first impressions, definitely not great just because it seems like part of the display has unfortunately been cracked during transit and the screen protectors and wraps are still fully sealed on it. It's not indicative of the quality of the product itself, more of an accident that happened during shipping and transit, which I can understand, but I do think more care and attention can be put into protecting the boxes uh, as part of the shipping, since again, it basically just came in this, so if something drops on the corner, uh, or if the box kind of falls, it could kind of easily shatter just the tablet inside, since there isn't any protective bubble wrap. Uh, we do have a sticker that says this is the top slot where we can put in the SIM card and my micro SD cards. It looks like it's pointing to this plastic antenna area that we can probably peel off to access it later on. Let's take this film off of the back of the tablet here. And it is constructed out of a aluminum unibody, so it does feel pretty solid and premium for a budget device. Certainly doesn't feel cheap or hollow like some of the perhaps Amazon Fire tablets for instance in the same price range, so construction of the product itself is pretty good. It's just a shame that again the shipping part due to that accident made it have a slightly sour taste. Anyways, on the side here we do have a standard 3.5mm headphone jack. There is a volume rocker and also a dedicated power key. And on the bottom here is where we have stereo speakers. And on the very top here we do have what looks like the charging port is actually using USB Type-C. So that's an upgrade actually, but what it means is both of the cables that came included in the box, which are micro USB, are not compatible with the actual port here, which is a newer Type-C. Again, the product itself in terms of the tablet, it means it's surprisingly modern and well put together. It's just a shame that more attention, I think, needs to be put into the packaging and presentation. At the very least, you should have accessories which actually fit the product that you're using. Anyways, as the tablet here is turning on, we see the boot up screen. I'm also going to peel off this pre-applied screen protector that you get. One that is included here, and there's a second screen protector again that you get in the box. So there's two of them. Jumping ahead a little bit, I basically set up the tablet by logging in and also connecting to Wi-Fi. This is what it looks like in terms of the home screen. Overall, it is pretty clean, doesn't have too much bloatware going on, and does have the standard kind of drag up notification drawer. We do have 
built in Netflix as far as a pre-included app, but everything else is just stock Android in terms of the Google suite, as well as notes, and also a screen capture tool is also built on in. As far as first impressions on the display is concerned, I would say it's decent in terms of viewing angles. It is an IPS panel, and the sharpness also seems to be acceptable for a HD quality panel. One thing I will say though is it's definitely not the brightest display in the world. Right now we are actually at the maximum brightness, so if you're outdoors in direct sunlight, it could be a little harder to see, but indoor environments, it's perfectly serviceable. Now, out of the 32 gigs of built-in storage, about 20% is used by the operating system out of the box, uh, but overall you still get over 25 gigs free to download your own apps and content with. Now, in terms of some special commands, we do have access to a few gestures that are baked into the OS and settings. There is Smart Wake, which allows you to double tap the display to turn it on and a few other special settings such as lifting the tablet to check notifications, as well as flipping the device over to mute a call or also get rid of a incoming alarm. Now in terms of the navigation bar, you can also customize it in terms of rearranging the order of the back, home, and multitasking keys. You can even hide the bar from view. In addition, if you go into systems gestures, you're also able to bring up the kind of gesture navigational method of swiping up to go home. So this is what we see right now and that's going to replace the standard home, back, and multitasking keys. So if you prefer gesture navigation, this tablet can also support that. Now we can see here that, again, it has two gigabytes of RAM, and overall, in terms of optimization, it still is handled decently. Despite not being the most in the world, it still is, again, keeping up with our general navigation. The processor here, again, an octa-core chip from Spectrum, seems to be slightly snappier than some MediaTek chips that you'll find on similarly priced Android tablets I've seen in the past. It also comes pre-installed with a Gboard from Google, and all the keys do take up the full width of the tablet. It makes it very comfortable for typing. So if we load up The Verge, this is going to be the desktop site. You can see it loads after a second, so still is decent. I would say again, the Spectrum octa-core chip is surprisingly capable for an entry-level uh, device, and scrolling at least is pretty fast and responsive, even though some of the content needs a few seconds longer for it to fully load. But at this price point, that is our expectation, and certainly it's still doing a pretty serviceable job. We can pinch in, and overall the fluidity still seems to be keeping up with our hands and fingers. If we try to load a different site like Amazon, for example, let's see how it does. By the way, the tablet does also have haptic feedback, so it slightly vibrates whenever you're tapping on one of the keys or the keyboard, so it gives you more of a tactile sensation. Once again, it's loading up pretty well in terms of the uh, overall speed and fluidity here. With two gigabytes of RAM, I would say you are able to keep up to five tabs or so open in Chrome before it starts to have to re-render and load the previous web pages when you go back and forth between them. But if you do not too much multi-tapped browsing or not too much multitasking, it still keeps up pretty well, especially in the single program that you're running at the time, everything is still loading along just fine thanks to that octa-core chip. Here's a quick demo of what it's like to watch a YouTube video on here. Again, the highest resolution that you can change to is going to be 720p. And of course, what the speakers sound like. All right, so turning the volume down, overall takeaways is the speaker quality is decent, at least it's a stereo pair and does have decent separation, gets plenty loud. And so if you're watching a quick clip, it actually works better than expected for a budget tablet. Again, you still have the standard headphone jack in addition to wireless Bluetooth as other options. Of course, it's a little bit on the tinny side, so it doesn't have the most bass, but for a tablet speaker, again, doing all right for the price, I'd say. Display quality is also decent in terms of IPS LCD screens do have a pretty natural look to them. Nothing is overly saturated, but it's also not giving us any bluish or yellowish tints. 
and viewing angles are also pretty good. With that being said, yes, you can do some very light split screen multitasking that's supported by Android natively, and that will still work. So you can be kind of watching a part of this video and interact with a web page here, and it still seems to be half decent, as long as you don't open up too much tabs uh, and kind of be a bit more conscious here on the amount of memory that is available. Otherwise, uh, with Android 10, of course, it does support picture in pictures. So as this video is playing, we can go back onto this home screen and it will just be a floating image as we do other things like check out the weather, uh, read back an article, something like that. Taking a quick look at the camera here, one thing is it kind of switches the orientation of the application, but you can still flip it over and the images will still take an either kind of portrait or horizontal. Accelerometer works as expected. It's a very basic camera. You can control the LED flash, there's a beauty mode, and you can apply a few different modes here just by swiping along, uh, giving you options like even a night shot mode, which is pretty rare to see on a tablet camera, but it optimizes a little bit if you're in a darker environment. You can even scan QR codes directly from the app, which is pretty neat. Obviously, it's not going to be amazing, but my criteria for a tablet camera is basically, is it good enough to capture and scan in some text and use it for emergency cases and it suffices. Overall, again, a basic camera, but the software works a little bit better than expected. Microphone quality is also pretty basic. Here's a demo. Hello, this is a test of the microphone quality on this tablet. One, two, three. But overall, again, it works, so you'll be using that if you want to make phone calls, for example, using the SIM card as kind of a massive phone, Skype, and other video conferencing tools. In terms of the applications that you can download from the Play Store, again, it is a modern tablet running on a decently up-to-date Android 9.0, so you can install pretty much any game or multimedia application that you would want from the Play Store without any issues. As far as the battery life is concerned, the 5000 mAh pack is also slightly above average, I'd say, coupled with the 720p display. It actually got me over 6 hours of screen on time, closer to 7 hours, and so pretty good endurance overall. This is definitely something that if you use it sporadically, you'll be able to charge, say, once every few days. Finally, in terms of the gaming performance, it's not going to be the best choice for things which are too demanding. It will definitely still get you by, and the overall fluidity is, again, better than expected for this Spectrum chip. I would say it's one of the better super budget-based chipsets compared to some of MediaTek's offerings that we've seen in the past, in terms of the fact that it's not giving us too much hiccups on light usage. One of the best attributes of the Spectrum chip is the fact that it never thermal throttles, at least in my testing. I did a few hours of web browsing and watching videos, and it never got hot or really even warm on any portion of the rear as I was touching it, so it still felt really comfortable and never made the processor have to work faster either. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the BDF M107 Android Fablet tablet with 4G connected capabilities. And overall, I like the product itself surprisingly quite a bit, since it's a really budget device selling for under $100, but has a real all-metal build, which is better than many of the other devices at the same price point, feels very solid, never gets too hot or even warm, and the Spectrum chip, I think, performs better than other devices I've seen in this price range in the past. If anything, it's just let down by the fact that it definitely needs more care and attention with the packaging. Nothing to do with the tablet itself, which again is surprisingly a good value, but the fact that the kind of contents in terms of the charging cable doesn't even match the Type-C port. They're using micro USB, uh, which is just very odd. And the fact that it's not really bubble wrapped, it just needs more care. And if they can fix that, the product itself is surprisingly a pretty good value, I would say, for an ultra budget device. So anyways, if you are interested, you can learn more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Review. It's a pretty interesting ultra-budget tablet that supports dual 4G SIM cards. It's been the M107 10-inch Android tablet.